Hello everyone, this is Seyed Arash Azimi and welcome to the presentation of the paper The Bit Vector Differential Model for the Modular Addition by Constant. This is a joint work with Adrian Ronea, Mahmoud Salmosizadeh, Javad Mohajiri, Mohamed Reza Arif, and Vincent Weyman. In this work, we studied a constant addition. But where does this operation appear? The answer is the AOX primitives, which mainly include A, which stands for modular addition, R for rotation, and X for XOR, as building blocks. You can see the round function of the AOX block cipher LIA here. Some other AOX block ciphers are TIA, XTIA, height, and spec. Also, we can name the AOX block cipher CHAM, which is recently introduced by Korean designers. There are other ARX constructions like hash function or stream ciphers, but we mainly pay attention to block ciphers. We evaluate the security of constant addition against differential cryptanalysis, which is a powerful tool to analyze ARX ciphers. Since you may be familiar with the differential cryptanalysis, let's briefly look at the concept of the attack. The idea is that the attacker encrypts pairs of x1, x2, and x3 alongside their constant difference alpha. So the attacker gets the distribution of the output difference beta. For a random function, the distribution is almost uniform. But for other functions, some specific betas are more probable. So the differential cryptanalysis exploits the differentials where the pair alpha and beta propagate with high probability. To show ARX security against differential cryptanalysis, one may try to do the standard search for differentials with highest probability and see whether the probability is low enough. But since the search are most of the time tough and impractical, people normally tend to find the longest and most probable differential trails by making some assumptions. Nowadays, the current state-of-the-art is automated tool, such as SMT Solver, which works on bit vector theory, which we will discuss later. However, SMT needs bit vector differential model for each operator. Differential model of any operator includes the constraints representing the propagation of the differences through the operation. This can be seen as some bit vector expressions, which is equal to true if and only if the conditions of the differential propagation are satisfied. For linear operations, it is easy to fully and uniquely represent the differential model using bit vector constraints. For example, rotation is a linear operation, and the input and output differences can be mapped by rotation function itself. On the other hand, for nonlinear operations, we split the differential model into two parts. First, the validity constraint is true if and only if the probability of the given difference propagation is non-zero. And second, the weight constraint is true if and only if the minus binary logarithm of the probability is equal to the extra input w. So, why do we use the weight constraint which needs the logarithm instead of the probability itself. The answer is to avoid the multiplication of the probabilities and instead use the addition of their weights. For addition with two variable inputs, we have an efficient bit vector differential model. Let's not focus on the constraints, but pay attention to the basic bit vectors and other OLAG and bit vectors. By O log n, we mean the size of the constraint for the operator is of the order of log n. So, the basic bit vector operators are the operators of size 1, such as XOR and addition. Please note that we do not consider the multiplication as a basic operator. Going back to the differential model of 2 input addition, we see that the model uses some basic bit vector operators as well as O log n bit vector operators like Hamming weight. Thanks to this model, SMT tools are able to model ARX ciphers using two input additions. But for constant addition, where one of the inputs is a constant, there was no appropriate differential model which could be used in automated tools. 
So the ciphers, including constant addition, could not be auto-analyzed regarding the differential cryptanalysis. In this work, we filled the gap. So the question is, why don't we use the differential model of two input addition for constant addition by choosing the second input difference to be zero? Before we answer that question, let's recall an important notion. We say two functions f and g are CCZ equivalent if there exists an affine mapping like L such that the graph of function f is mapped to the graph of function g. Informally speaking, the CCZ equivalence preserves the differential behavior of the function after mapping. Now, to answer the previous question, we can see that two input addition is CCZ equivalent to a quadratic function, but for the constant addition, there is no such equivalency. Moreover, we tested the 8 bit addition for all possible constant inputs, and we saw that the suggested model fails in terms of the validity as well as the actual probability. Also, modeling the constant addition is much harder than two input addition because the non-zero entries of the DDT of a quadratic function, as well as the two input addition, is always power of two. So the weight is always an integer for the case of two input addition. However, for constant addition, it is a challenge to represent the weight using bit vectors, since in general it is an irrational number. The only previous work on differential probability of constant addition is this algorithm provided by Machado in 2002. In simple words, it considers the probability of carry propagation for each bit, and it loops over all bits by considering the input and output differences of corresponding bits, and by checking 8 conditions as well as having one floating point memory, it updates the probability accordingly. Although the algorithm is efficient, it is not suitable for automated models, since to be used in SMT one needs to unroll the algorithm, so the model will be at least of linear size, but we seek for luck and size for our differential model. Moreover, this floating point arithmetic does not go very well with bit vector theory. Also, we tend to have weight for the model, not the probability itself. We took Machado algorithm as an inspiration, and we got an efficient and appropriate bit vector differential model for constant addition. The construction of our model is long and technical, so here we just provide some key points. For validity part, we use a single carry function to check and verify whether in every position the input and output differences are valid or not. For the weight part, we use known efficient OLAC and bit vector functions, such as Hamming weights, reverse of the bit orders, and leading zeros. Also, we use the carry functions, which can be created using basic operators. As we mentioned earlier, the binary logarithm is not always an integer, and to work with bit vectors, we need to find a suitable approximation for binary logarithm. To show how we get our approximate logarithm using bit vector operators, let's consider the following example. To find the approximate binary logarithm of x, we first find the most significant 1, which is here, and its position determines the integer part of our approximation. Then we take the remaining bits of x and we truncate the first 4 bits and consider them as the fraction part of the logarithm. And that's it, we have the approximated binary logarithm. We also present some new efficient bit vector operators which can compute the logarithms in parallel and find the sum of them to obtain the weight. This is done using a specific mask vector such as m. When m has the pattern of all ones followed by single zero, it means that we want to compute the binary logarithm of the corresponding subvectors of x in parallel and add them together.
This is the bit vector differential model of constant addition that we obtained. Let's focus on some remarks of the constraints. First, as we can see, the differential model of constant addition has more constraints than two input addition. Moreover, the validity part is quite simple. It only uses basic operators and a single carry function. So its bit vector complexity is O1. The weight part is more complex. It uses some bit vector operators of size O log n, such as Hamming weight, leading zeros, reverse, and two new O log n bit vector operators, which are called PL and PT, alongside many basic operators. So the bit vector complexity of this part is O log n. We use an approximation for binary logarithm, so it is inevitable to see some errors in our weight part, and we need to carefully study the error bounds. To do so, first we study the approximation error when there is no truncation. As we can see, the error is bounded by small numbers, and we could easily compute them. Next, we bound the error when we have truncation, and we found that Dedicating four or more bits for the truncation will always result on the same error bounds. So, for the sake of efficiency, we chose four bits for the fraction part of our approximation. And we see the same bounds for the total weight error, as if we would not truncate at all. Let's remark again that representing the weight of the constant addition using fixed binary vectors will always result in error since the weight is an irrational number in this case. Now let's see how we can use the model in SMT to obtain differential traits. That was all for the first part of this presentation and I, Adrián and Ranea, will present the second part of this work. Apart from the differential model that we described before, we also show in this paper a method to use SMT solvers to search for characteristic of ciphers, including the constant addition. An SMT solver can solve decision problems, yes and no questions, but we want to solve a search problem. We want to search for a characteristic with the highest probability, equivalently with the lowest weight. So we need to translate this search problem into a sequence of decision problems, and we do as follows. We start with initial weight zero, then we encode the decision problem of whether there exists a characteristic with integer weight zero, meaning with weight between zero and one. We feed this problem to an SNT solver, and if the SNT solver finds this problem satisfiable, we ask the SNT solver for an assignment of the variables that makes this problem satisfiable, and from this assignment we recover the characteristic. Otherwise, if the SNT solver finds this problem unsatisfiable, we increase the weight by one and we repeat the process. We encode the SMP problem of whether there is a characteristic with integer one and we continue until we find a problem that is satisfiable. To speed up this search, we first search for a characteristic covering a small number of rounds and then we increase the number of rounds and we reuse the initial weight as the weight of the characteristic that we found before. Moreover, under the standard assumptions of key independence and wrong independence, the characteristics that are found by this method are optimal, meaning with minimal weight. The most complex task of this method is how to encode efficiently the SMT problems, and I will explain how we do it with an example. Assume that we have the cipher on the left, and we want to write down the SMT problem of whether there exists a characteristic with a tire weight. So first, we define a symbolic variable, delta p, that represents the input difference. And in order to propagate this input difference through the first operation, we define another symbolic variable, delta x, denoting the output difference 
of this first constant addition and we append to the SNT problem the differential model that describes the propagation of the input difference through the constant addition. We also define a symbolic variable w1 that denotes the weight of this propagation. In a similar way, we propagate delta x through the XOR of the wrong key k. To do so, we just include the differential model that represents how difference propagate through the XOR. In this case, it's a linear operation. It's very easy. And we continue propagating the symbolic variables denoting the intermediate difference. We propagate delta y to delta z and delta z to delta q. Because the last operation is also a nonlinear operation, we also define another symbolic variable, w2, that denotes the weight of this and last propagation. And finally, we include a final constraint that ensures that the sum of the weight of each nonlinear operation is equal to the target weight that we consider, one for each SNT problem. In the end, we obtain a logic formula with an existential quantifier. So this formula, this problem, it is true or false, and we can fit this into an SNT solver, and it will find out whether this problem is satisfiable or not, and if it is satisfiable, we can ask for an assignment of, the, of these variables, delta p, delta x, up to uh, w2, and we can recover the characteristic and the weight from this assignment. The main drawback when using SNT solvers is that the language to implement them is not very user-friendly, something between C and assembly. So it requires a high effort to implement this problem. That's why we provide a Python tool, ARXPy, that fully automates the search of ARX characteristic. Our tool implements this differential model and also previous differential model. It implements this method that is based on SNT solvers and it provides, implements many optimization to make this search efficient. The workflow of this tool is as follow. First, the users need to implement the RX ciphers in Python following the interface provided by RxPy and the user need to select the search parameters like the type of characteristic to search or the SNT solver to use. And then the tool will do, will do the rest. First, it will translate the Python implementation of the cipher to single static assignment form that is easier to manipulate. It will encode and create the SNT problems. It will communicate with the SNT solver to find the problems that are satisfiable. And it will verify the characteristics that are obtained by sampling many plain text and many keys, and in the end, providing the results to our user. This tool, ARXPy, it's fully open source. You can find it on GitHub, and we also include, provide a complete documentation so this can be useful for the community. We applied this model and this tool to search for some characteristic of ciphers, including the constant addition. Unfortunately, the constant addition has mainly been used in the key schedules of the ciphers. And the reason of that is that up to now, it was very difficult to search for characteristic of ciphers, including the constant addition. So designers avoided using the constant addition in the wrong function of the cipher. So they could easily argue differential cryptanalysis. That's why we instead search for related key characteristics, meaning for a pair of characteristics, one characteristic goes over the key schedule and the other one goes over the encryption part and it reuses the wrong key differences from the first characteristic. And the target ciphers that we consider are X, Tia, Tia, Height, and Lia. The standard assumptions of key independence and wrong independence do not hold for the related key characteristic of this cipher. That's why we verify each characteristic empirically. So after the SNT solver finds a problem satisfiable, we split the, this characteristic into smaller ones, and we check each smaller one with 2 to the 20 pairs for 2 to the 10 keys. And if there is a small characteristic that has zero probability for all the keys, we discard the whole characteristic and query 
descent is over for another one. And the results that we obtain, uh, we use ARXPy with SNT Solver Bullector, which has won many awards by solving SNT problems in the bit vector theory. These are the results that we obtain. Let me guide you through this table. In the third column, we provide the pair of weights for the characteristic over the key schedule. The first weight is the theoretical weight, computed summing the weight of each non operation, and the second weight is the empirical weight computed in the verification process when we sample many plaintiffs and many keys. And in the fourth column, we provide a pair of weights in a similar way as in the third column. And in the fifth column, we provide the fraction of the keys out of these 2 to 10 keys used in the verification process that lead to non-zero, that lead to characteristic with non-zero probabilities. So, for example, for TIA, we obtained a characteristic over the whole cipher with weight zero, meaning probability one. This characteristic was previously obtained with manual methods, and we recover this characteristic in a fully automated way. For XTIA, we obtain characteristic covering more rounds and with better probability with lower weights. For LIA, we could search uh, up to seven rounds because we aim for, for optimal characteristic, characteristic with low weights. Previous results and could obtain characteristic with very low probability up to 11 rounds. This is a similar behavior that in the single key case. For Lee in the single key case, one can search for optimal characteristic up to six rounds, and one can search for non-optimal characteristic up to 11 or 12 rounds. And finally, for height, we obtain characteristic covering more rounds uh, with better probability, similar as in the case of XTIA. That is all for this presentation. Thank you very much for your time.